What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of BTB RV Rants. Let's dive straight into the questions. So the first question is a very common concern people have. This specific viewer says that they have a 30 foot travel trailer. It's a 2019 Grand Design 2400 BH. Has a dry weight of 5600 pounds and a gross vehicle weight rating of 7495 pounds and a 500 pound hitch weight. He doesn't really plan on getting a new trailer, but he does want to possibly look at a new truck. Now he is kind of connected to the GMC Sierra brand even though he's driven the other ones but his main concern is should he get a 1500 crew cab with the 6.2 liter gas engine a 1500 crew cab with a 3 liter diesel engine or should he upgrade to a 3 quarter ton at 2500 HD with the 6.6 .6 liter diesel engine. Now his big concern is the fact that he commutes every day and it's about a 40 minute drive and he wants his ride to be comfortable and practical while at the same time giving him the ability to tow the trailer that they have. Well right off the bat I can tell you with the gross vehicle weight rating of 7495 pounds I would generally suggest a 3 quarter ton truck whether it's gas or diesel. I do not believe you need a diesel truck at that weight. I do believe that a three quarter ton truck is a heavier and more stable towing platform for any trailers that are over 6,000 pounds. 7,000 pounds is usually the limit where I'll draw a line. Anything above that I generally recommend you go with a three quarter ton truck. Now all that being said, when it comes to fuel economy, the three liter diesel by far is gonna give you the best fuel economy of any of the trucks, mainly because it's gonna have a engine that is tuned specifically for fuel economy. It will still give you the towing capability you need for your trailer, as well as the 6.2 liter gas engine with a 1500, but I just don't feel that it's a heavy enough truck to give you the stability you might be looking for. I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm not saying that I'm prohibiting you or I'm telling you that it's not possible. I'm just telling you my personal preference when it comes to towing trailers over 6,000 pounds. Yours being closer to 7,500 pounds, that's really where I would say it would be important that you look at a three-quarter ton. Now, all that being said, what you also need to consider is how you're driving it every day. And if your 40-minute commute to work every day is something that is going to be a huge deciding factor, well, then a three-quarter ton truck is absolutely going to be a firmer ride than a half ton. It's not even really going to be in the same ballpark. Three-quarter ton trucks have come a long way in terms of how comfortable they are over the road, but they're still a three-quarter ton truck, and it's going to feel like a three-quarter ton truck. So you want to keep that in mind. So the next question comes from a viewer who is interested in understanding what my take is on the Trail Air Flex Air pin box from Lippert. It's essentially a suspension pin box that utilizes an airbag to dampen the shock effect between the trailer and the truck whenever you go over bumps. In my opinion, really any type of suspension pin box is going to be an improvement. Now what you also have to understand is what type of movement that suspension system is dampening. There are some systems that help dampen the movement forward and back. There are some suspension systems that help dampen the up and down movement. And then there are some that simply provide kind of like a hinged effect to dampen that forward and back rocking motion. In my opinion, any of them are going to be an improvement over no suspension pin box at all. It really depends on what you're trying to accomplish. The chucking effect that a lot of people want to get rid of is really going to exist regardless of what you do. You can limit it, you can reduce it, but you really can't eliminate it. And that's only because it's the dynamics of hooking two vehicles together and the movement that exists between those two vehicles. But what I would suggest is you look at the different pin boxes the types of movements that they help address and how they dampen it. And I would go with one that has the fewest moving parts with the fewest failure points. Air products tend to have a higher failure point only because you're dealing with an airbag that is absorbing a lot of shock. But there are still very good high quality products out there like the Flex Air product. Moride makes a really good rubberized pin box which uses a rubber dampener. Lippert also has one that has a rubber bushing to help dampen it. But really any pin box upgrade over a non-suspension pin box is going to be an improvement. Now the second part of his question is related to what my thoughts are on the Roadmaster Slipper Spring kit for a dual axle trailer. Basically it is a leaf spring kit that replaces 
replaces an equalizer on your traditional two axle trailer. In my opinion, it's not necessarily something that's needed most of the time. It does reduce the amount of wearable components and it does provide a good suspension setup. It's actually kind of old technology, but in my opinion, I want that equalization. I want to have an equalizer that transfers weight somewhat evenly across both axles. And when you move to some of these systems, even an independent system, you have to be sure you're towing your trailer as level as possible with the weight balanced properly above both axles. Otherwise, you could run into a scenario where you're prematurely adding wear and tear to whichever axle has more of the weight resting on it, as well as a higher likelihood that you're going to have a tire failure. So in my opinion, even though it's a good product, you have to be careful that you're towing completely flat with it, and it's not going to provide you equalization across both axles. So the next question is a very good question, and it comes from a viewer who wants to know my opinion on what's easier to tow and maneuver, a 37-foot travel trailer or a 37-foot fifth wheel. First, let's talk about towing. A 37-foot fifth wheel is going to tow easier with less sway or actually no sway at all versus a travel trailer, period, simply because of where the connection is. The connection is directly above the axles, and it's going to pretty much eliminate any chance of sway. Now, it's going to be a taller profile, so you may be impacted by wind a little bit more, but you're not going to feel it as much simply because you don't have the weight hanging off the back of the truck. You have the weight hanging over the back axle axle of the truck. So a fifth wheel is always going to provide a more comfortable towing experience in all conditions versus a travel trailer. Now a travel trailer is going to give you a pretty good experience if you're using a great weight distribution sway control hitch and it's tuned properly. So if you have the right setup with a travel trailer you can still have a good experience but still a fifth wheel is going to win out in the towing category pretty much handily. Now when it comes to overall length you also have to remember a 37 foot fifth wheel isn't going to extend off the back of the truck 37 feet. Part of it's going to hang over the truck. So in reality, you're probably only going to have roughly 32 to 33 feet worth of trailer extending off the back. A 37 foot travel trailer is going to exclusively hang off the back of the truck. So it's going to be a longer overall setup if you're comparing the two. And those are actual lengths that you're talking about. Now, when it comes to maneuverability, a fifth wheel ideally can give you a little bit more maneuverability simply because of the angle you can get when you're turning all the way up to about 90 degrees if you have a fifth wheel and your truck is set up properly with the right length of bed and the right cap on the front of your fifth wheel to allow for it plus the right bed height to overhang clearance of your fifth wheel a travel trailer you're probably only going to get about 70 degrees worth of turning angle whenever you're maneuvering it and that again is simply because of how it's mounted to the back of the truck so in most cases under ideal conditions a fifth wheel is going to give you a better towing experience and more maneuverability so i hope that answers your question so the next question is actually a pretty difficult question question. It is related to upgrading your battery bank on the front of a travel trailer or really any type of trailer, whether it's a fifth wheel or travel trailer. Batteries can be pretty heavy and by adding additional batteries, you are adding a pretty good amount of weight to the front of your travel trailer fifth wheel. So understanding what effect that has on the capacity of your truck at that point and how it affects the cargo and payload capacity is very important. So this specific question is right now he has a single battery on the tongue which weighs about 70 pounds and he'd like to increase the capacity and that increase in capacity would equal about 240 pounds worth of battery weight on the front of his travel trailer and he wants to know is that going to be an issue could it increase the tongue weight enough to overload the truck and it very possibly could tongue weight is directly hanging off the back of your truck and that is weight that goes against the cargo or payload capacity of your truck an equalization hitch such as an equalizer which is what he uses can help transfer some of that weight to the front of your truck but you do need to understand how much weight is actually going to be added and how it affects what capacity you have remaining on your truck so in his case he has a ram 1500 with the max tow package looking at what that sticker is and understanding how much weight he's physically 
actually transferring to the back is going to be really important. I can't calculate that for you because I don't know all of the numbers, but you will have to mess with it and play around with it to get to where you need to be to make sure you're not transferring too much weight to the back of your truck or you're not removing too much weight. That's one of the reasons why a lot of people like to go to lithium ion batteries. I know they're terribly expensive, but they weigh significantly less and you can generally get a significantly higher capacity without having to increase your weight. So that's one of the reasons why lithium is such a good choice. I hope that answers your question. Guys, that's going to wrap it up for this episode of BTB RV Rants. If you haven't had a chance, please subscribe to this channel as well as my main channel, Big Truck Big RV. I'll talk to you again very soon.